If you are or were in a relationship with someone that you suspect has a cluster B personality disorder, borderline, narcissistic, histrionic, or antisocial personality disorder, it is highly likely that you are feeling incredibly confused and conflicted right now. Chances are the relationship started out with a bang, with fireworks, like something straight out of an erotic romance novel. You were love bombed, sex bombed, seduced, charmed, and made to feel like you were the most incredible, invincible man on the planet. But now you're feeling incompetent, inadequate, guilty, devastated, and you're wondering what the hell went wrong? I'm Lise LeBlanc and today I'm talking about the tactics and mind games that are used by someone with an untreated cluster B personality disorder. And these tactics are used to lure you and to lock you into a toxic web. If you've seen my first video on this topic, you know about the FIL acronym and the process and stages that a female covert narcissist uses to trap you. And if you haven't seen this video, uh, just click on the link above. Before I get into this topic, I want to say that this video is aimed at helping men because I find that there are not enough resources out there for guys who are experiencing psychological and relationship abuse. If you like this video, please like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Okay, so let me quickly review the FIL acronym and why these amazing personality characteristics can be so detrimental when in the hands of a toxic person. The P in the FIL acronym stands for the protector archetype, and this is the need to be needed. So more than anything, the protector type wants to help find solutions, ease the suffering of others, and there is nothing wrong with this, but a toxic person will use your protector instincts to make you feel fully responsible for them, putting the burden entirely on you to make her feel safe, make her feel secure. And this is a problem because her brain is structured to see people and the world as unsafe and unpredictable. This is based in her biology, in complex trauma, or in a combination of factors depending on the illness and the severity. And these factors are outside of your realm of influence. It's a problem you can't fix. And yet she wants you to believe that you can, and she wants to believe it herself. So before I go further, some women with personality disorders may be unaware of what they're doing or why they're doing it. And others are intentional, maybe even malicious when it gets into the realm of antisocial personality disorder. The H stands for the need to be a hero, to overcome obstacles and triumph against all odds. This is someone who doesn't give up easily and believes that, you know, anything is possible and there is a treasure waiting at the end of the struggle. And in some cases, this may be true. But when it comes to personality disorders, her feelings of shame, inadequacy, and unworthiness run so deep. And as much as you want to save her, she has to be the hero of her own story and get the help she needs. But once she casts you into the hero role and you buy into the idea that you just need to work harder, give more, be smarter, be better, do more, save her, um, the more you will lose your grip on reality and on your sense of self. Um, as you accept more and more blame for not fixing and saving her, she will take every opportunity to amplify your feelings of inadequacy, of failure, making you believe that maybe a better man could have saved her. The I stands for integrity and the need to prove that you are who you say you are. And a huge part of this relationship will be spent with you working very, very hard to prove your worth, to prove that you are going to keep your promises, keep your commitments, uh, no matter what she does to you. The L in Phil stands for being loving and loyal. And again, a great quality. 
but someone with a personality disorder will often demand your loyalty at the expense of your own wants, your own needs, your values, and your vision for your life. While all of these qualities are highly desirable to most women, when they are in the hands of someone with a cluster B personality disorder, especially if it's untreated, these characteristics can and will be used against you. Now, I've talked about how this all plays out in, an, in, in my previous video on this topic, but I've had many requests to go into the stages in more detail and to provide some tips on how to respond during each of these stages. Unfortunately, many people get this information too late and most people think, ah, I can handle this because they just don't realize the danger until it's too late. And even if and when they do get out, they suffer intensely with symptoms of withdrawal, including feelings of guilt, abandonment, failure, intense anxiety, cravings. So here's how this toxic relationship pattern generally plays out. So stage one here, of course, you've got the extreme love and sex bombing. And this is about firing up your imagination, the emotional side of your brain, your hormones, and all of those neurotransmitters associated with love, connection, belonging, safety, security, significance, and addiction. She makes you feel high by quickly identifying your deepest, most primal needs, whatever that may be. Um, again, it might be sex, it might be emotional connection, it might be excitement, it might be the need to be wanted, loved, valued, nurtured, uh, to be the protector, the hero, things that we all want. Um, and then she will flood you with words and gestures to fill you up with that very need that you've been lacking and deprived of. And in no time, she'll have you craving her like a love drunk teenager. In this stage, you will get the sweet, seductive, vulnerable side of her, the woman of your dreams. At this point, it's all about you and getting you addicted to her. This seemingly comes at a very small price of simply promising to be her hero, to keep her safe, to never ever leave her. And why would you ever want to leave? <laughs> You're totally in love with this person and how she's making you feel but your brain chemistry and your hormones are under siege. And it does feel amazing. It feels absolutely perfect, magical. She is everything you've ever wanted and so much more. She's showering you with love, sex, attention, praise, and adoration. And you've never had such a feeling of being loved, wanted, needed um, in your whole life. You've never had so much nurturing, so much sex, and the compatibility is out of this world. She likes everything you like. She wants everything you want. Before you know it, you are completely lost in her. You are the center of her universe, and she's probably the center of yours. You're intoxicated by those seductive eyes, those long lyrical text messages where she's professing her love and gratitude for just having met you. She just can't believe what an angel you are. Her knight in shining armor, her person, her soulmate. You're unlike anyone she's ever met. And again, you're lapping it all up thinking about her constantly just waiting for your next fix and part of you might be thinking this is too good to be true maybe you have a gut feeling but you think you can handle it um, maybe you've been through this before and you know the price tag but you just don't want to pull away from this or slow it down because it feels so good but when it comes to your response when you suspect that you're being love bombed it's exactly that you need to rein yourself in a bit Ask yourself if this is healthy, balanced, is it sustainable? Don't go all in. Don't give your full trust or make grand promises in the first few weeks or months of a relationship based on what someone is telling you and how they're making you feel. You know, it may be totally legit, but it may also be a huge manipulation to seduce you, control you, and trap you.
So if it feels too good to be true, if the speed and intensity of the relationship is over the top, then take a step back. Work on rebalancing your brain chemistry. Engage with other people in activities that you enjoy. And don't get too attached to this ideal fantasy person and you know shared fantasy future. If she has good intentions and the emotional capacity for a healthy relationship, you'll work together to build a life of passion, purpose, and trust over time and consistent effort. And if you're dealing with someone who is toxic, she will not respond well when you don't jump into her bold, seductive attempts to idealize and groom you. In fact, she may discard you or she might take different angles to get you to commit and invest in her. Assuming you agree to go along with it, you will soon move into stage two. This is where the confusion and dissonance starts to set in. You begin to get glimpses of another side of her. At first, it might just be minor things. Something trivial happens and she overreacts gets angry, critical, demeaning, starts questioning your integrity, your ability to be trusted. Um, The point being that you experience a massive shift in her. And this first blow catches you completely off guard because just a few minutes ago, you were both head over heels in love. Everything was perfect up until now. Now you've done something to hurt her, something that's caused her to lose faith in you. Maybe she's threatening the relationship. And this something that happened that you're being blamed for will most definitely be something that's based in misperception, not in facts. So for example, let's say you have a short, innocent conversation with the waitress while you're paying the bill. Then you realize while walking to the car that your sweet, sexy goddess has turned into an ice queen. So you ask, hey, well, what's going on? Are you okay? It's fine. Oh, what's going on? Why are you upset? Never mind. Doesn't matter. She's totally shut down. Or maybe she goes straight into accusing you of being interested in the waitress or betraying her trust. She lets you know that her image of you as her protector, her hero, has been shattered, expresses fear about you being just like all the others who have abused or hurt her. You try to explain, but you can't seem to change her perception. And the more you try to, the worse things get. If you fight back, you're cast as an abuser. If you walk away, you're a coward. If you freeze up, you're emotionally immature. But there's one response that will be rewarded, and that is the fawn response. I won't go into great detail about the fawn response in today's video, other than to say that this is when you try to become more appealing to the threat by appeasing her giving in and agreeing to accept her perceptions, feelings, interpretations, needs, even though they're inaccurate. But going into the fawn response is the last thing you want to do. And as hard as it is to stay rational, focused, and in control of your emotions while she's pushing all of your buttons, it is important to respectfully stand up for yourself. Don't agree to deny your own reality to appease her. Communicate using the strategies I've included in the description section of this video. If you keep your cool while she's unraveling, you will quickly be blamed for the episode and possibly discarded. Or she may apologize, explain and justify why she reacted that way. And in this case, she is testing to see how much of this you are going to accept and tolerate. So if you do this, you get to go to stage three, which is the roller coaster of emotions. So just as you're thinking that things are getting better, back to normal, she lashes out again. And it's worse this time. You're getting another tongue lashing, but it's more vicious, like a shark attack. She's out for blood. She's threatening to end it, to rip everything away. She may break up with you or maybe just pull away for a while to put you in a state of withdrawals and ensure that you realize how terrible you're going to feel without her. Show you that you better fight and you better try harder. And, you know, you genuinely just want things to go back to the way they were. They were perfect. 
but despite how much you try to shift yourself, try to adapt and accommodate her, no matter how hard you try to get her to see how much you love her, care about her, how much you want a beautiful future in life with her, things just continue to deteriorate. So in this stage, you find yourself walking on eggshells, trying to avoid upsetting her, never knowing when you're going to set her off. And whenever she wants something, she just needs to look at you with those seductive eyes, follow it up with sex, a few sweet compliments or gestures, just enough to keep you hopeful that the woman you fell in love with still exists. You're feeling endlessly confused and conflicted and like you're starting to unravel. And there's no end in sight to the chaos and the conflict and this cycle of abuse. There may still be some great times, um, but the extreme lows and the cost of the ticket of this never-ending roller coaster ride is becoming too much. You're getting very anxious. You're waking up feeling on edge every day, feel stressful, unpredictable, and emotionally unsafe. That sunshine she used to bring to your life has turned to darkness. And worst of all, you feel like the person you used to be is slipping away right before your eyes. You can no longer deny the toxicity or what it's doing to you, but you're so addicted that you'll do just about anything to avoid the withdrawal symptoms. Meanwhile, she's getting more psychologically abusive and she may even be getting physically abusive, throwing things at you, slapping, kicking you, um, if you're not together physically, you will get never-ending barrages of abusive text messages. Depending on you know, what you're dealing with, she may even threaten to harm herself or threaten suicide. She always eventually cools back down, but it's just not so much fun anymore. And you don't know how much longer you can take this. Maybe she breaks up with you during one of her outbursts, or maybe you decide to end things. Maybe it's an on again, off again thing. But the extreme highs and lows act like a drug, getting you more and more addicted with each cycle. And you start feeling like you're losing your sanity. You're buried in guilt, fear, and you're exhausted. Maybe even blaming yourself. Maybe you know, she's telling you how hard she's trying to make this work, but how hard you're making it for her to trust you. Again, you're getting the message that you need to change. You need to work harder to be her protector, to be her hero, to be in integrity, to be loyal to her. And no matter how hard you try, these waves just continue to crash on you. Regardless of how it ends, or even who ends it, it will take time to restabilize your brain chemistry, your hormones, and to get your mind and your emotions back in check. The extreme highs and lows of this relationship have gotten you addicted, and now you will suffer the withdrawals, which can take weeks, months, maybe longer, depending on the length of the relationship and the severity and speed of that toxic cycle. So if you're out of this relationship or if you need help getting out, contact a mental health professional in your area who can help you process your thoughts, your feelings, help you restabilize your emotions and get your you know, sense of self back, get you in tune with your wants, your needs, your values, your vision, and get your life back on track. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and for more information on how a female covert narcissist traps you, please click on the link above.